Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Wednesday, presented by the University of Arizona Health Sciences. I'm Caroline Berger, Director of Corporate and Community Relations for the University of Health Sciences in Phoenix. We were experiencing some, a little bit of technical difficulties, so Barry is on hand to advance our slides for us today. So thank you, Barry, if you wouldn't mind advancing to the next slide. I want to welcome you all again from our newly formed team at the University of Arizona Health Sciences with our wonderful leader, Allison Otu, who is our Executive Director, colleague Anne-Marie Marina Medina, who is our Director in Tucson, and there's myself. Like I said, we are a newly formed team and we're very excited and honored to present this new series to you. Barry? A little bit about University of Arizona Health Sciences. We offer the College of Medicine both in Tucson and in Phoenix, as well as the College of Nursing, Pharmacy, and the Mel and Enid Zucker College of, Pub of Public Health. We have a main campus in Tucson that many of you might be familiar with, but we also offer a, a campus in Phoenix at well, as well on the biomedical campus. Next slide, please. Our leader, is Michael D. Dake, Dr. Michael D. Dake, who serves as the Senior Vice President for Health Sciences. And we're very honored to be here and to pre present this series, which today is a third, uh, our third one that we are gonna be continuing. So we're delighted that you're here with us. Next slide. Um, we are here, as we said, to connect with you. An exciting new thing that the University of Arizona launched last week as a new data texting platform. We invite you to join us. You'll see the number there, one 410 Be sure to join us for updates on COVID-19, as well as resources that may help you during these challenging times. Next slide, please. Be sure to leave a question in the chat section. We wanna make this as interactive as possible and be able to help address your questions today. Next slide, please. And now, very excited to present our, our featured speaker today. And what an important topic this is, is we're all kind of facing the unknown and new challenges. This is an interesting global pandemic that really has touched every single one of us across the world. Sarah Beaudry is here today. Sarah is a yoga teacher and yoga therapist, specializing in yoga for the individual. She's been teaching yoga for more than 11 years and has studied in India and has also provided support in Tucson at the VA Medical Center where she has helped veterans with PTSD. She also owns Blessing Yoga in Tucson, which we'll hear a little bit more about. I can tell you she's very active in the community. She is a wonderful leader and also serves as Director of Marketing and Communications at the University of Arizona Alumni Association. Sarah, we're so happy that you're joining us today. Hi, Caroline. It's great to be here. I'm happy to be here and to talk all about breathing. So I'm going to get ready to share my screen. All right, so uh, we'll begin with my presentation, the power of breath, transforming the way we perceive and respond to life. And I also am experiencing, oh, here we go. I was experiencing a moment of technical difficulty there. So our relationship with breathing is so important. Our breath is available to us at any time and can help support us and nurture us. And when we begin to understand our breath and, our, and improve our relationship with it, breathing can help transform the way we, res we respond to the people and the world around us. That means it can help us improve our relationships with family, friends, pets, and even strangers. We're certainly living in an ever-changing world uh, when faced with uncertainty, like we have been in the last couple of months, it is natural to experience anxious moments, stress, and feelings of over overwhelm. Um, if we're bombarded with email and texts, as well as personal and family responsibilities, we may have trouble focusing. And some of these frequent 
frequent interruptions can scatter our thoughts and even make us tense and anxious. So what happens to our bodies when we experience tension or stress? Each of us respond to stress differently, that's certainly true, but our bodies may perceive stressors as a threat and engage in a stress response. For example, our breath can quicken when we're in a rush or shorten when we're in a panic. And depending on how our body responds, because like I mentioned, we all respond differently, uh, we may experience varying sides, side effects. So our heart rate might increase, our muscles might tighten, our blood pressure could rise, our digestive activity could even decrease, and we may experience hormonal systems that become imbalanced. So today I'm going to talk about how we can manage stress using breath awareness. When we practice breath awareness, we can influence how we respond to everyday stresses and then respond to the things that trigger us with more ease. So at this point in the presentation, I'm going to introduce you to a breath awareness practice. After that's done, I'll move back to the presentation. So most of you are probably seated in a chair. Uh, please get comfortable in your chair. You, may, you might move to the front of your chair and make sure your feet are firmly planted on the floor. Find a lengthening in your spine from the base of the spine to the top of the head. And then I'm gonna ask you to begin by closing your eyes and watching your breath. Watching your breath is actually breath awareness. So as you begin to watch your breathing, Allow the inhale and the exhale to happen naturally without any attempt to control your breathing. If possible, inhale and exhale through your nose. And if you're a little stuffy, you can always breathe through your mouth. And as you become aware of your breath, try and make your breath as smooth as possible. And breathe just loud enough that you can hear your own breath. And if your mind wanders, that's okay. Just bring your attention back to your breathing. And if you get a little bit lost, Take a pause and just engage in shorter inhales and exhales. This will generally return your breath to a smooth sound. And we'll continue to watch our breath for about a minute and I'll cue you partway through. Remember to soften in the shoulders. Soften in the chin and the jaw. And if your mind wanders, that's natural. Just bring your attention back to your breathing. And you're becoming more and more familiar with the rhythm of your breath. And allowing the breath to become smoother and smoother. And more and more relaxed. I'm gonna to start to bring you back here. So I'll ask you to gradually, slowly open your eyes and bring your awareness back to the room. And as you become more aware of the room, just take note. Take note of the quality of your mind. 
and whether or not it took you a little while to be able to focus your attention on your breath. And I'll continue, I'm gonna talk a little bit about healthy breathing patterns. The breath awareness practice that we just did teaches us to become aware of how we are breathing. It helps us return our breath to its natural rhythm, which is super, super important for creating healthy breathing pat patterns. Uh, we don't want our breathing patterns and our habits to include short, ragged or shallow breathing. And that's, hap and that's easy to happen when we're not paying super close attention to how we breathe. Uh, lasting changes in our breathing patterns take time. Uh, so if it doesn't happen right away, that's okay. It, it does uh, require some regular consistent practice. So what happens when we breathe fully? By breathing fully, we receive and increase oxygen that regenerates the body's cells, nourishes the brain, replenishes the organs, and refuels the muscles and bodily systems. You can see in the diagram to the right, the breath cycle. The breath comes in through the lungs, oxygen moves to the red blood cells, to the organs, then carbon dioxide is released back out of the lungs, and we enjoy a beautiful breath cycle, the more and more we consciously engage in breathing. So right now I'm gonna talk a little bit about pranayama, which are the breathing practices of yoga. The ancient yogis devised a system of breathing practices called pranayama, and they translate in Sanskrit as an extension of life energy. Prana or energy, flows in on inhale, and on exhale, we eliminate energies we no longer need. Our breath simultaneously influences all layers of the mind, body, and emotions. And prana, which is transported by the breath, helps free blocks in all the layers. So what do I mean by freeing blocks? When we uh, practice conscious breathing or pranayama, our body releases tension and we feel light. Our mind releases negative thoughts and we're able to focus. And our emotional state calms so that we can find clarity. Uh, there's different, uh, several different types of pranayama uh, from Nadi Shonana, which the gentleman in the upper left-hand corner is practicing, to conscious breathing, which we'll do a little bit later, cooling breath, which is called shitali, and ujjayi, which is soft whisper at the back of the throat or throat breathing. And now I'll talk a little bit about connecting body, breath, and mind in yoga. The definition of yoga is the ability to direct the mind exclusively toward an object of focus and sustain that direction without any distractions. So how do we get there? Connecting breath and movement is one way to direct our focus and attention. Our minds are super active and, one, and sometimes we experience what we might call monkey minds, where thoughts may bombard us or hop from one thing to the next. So simply stopping to breathe can be a challenge, like the practice that we just did in breath and awareness. That may have been a challenge for us just to stop and become aware of our breath. So we begin in yoga practices by connecting breath with movement because it gives the mind a way to focus attention. So we'll begin, um, the rest of my presentation is going to be a practice and we'll begin with a gentle movement practice so that you can experience what it's like to connect breath with movement and hopefully focus the mind before we enter into uh, another breath awareness and conscious breathing practice. So again, if you're seated in a chair, please move up a little bit toward the front of the chair so that your feet are firmly planted on the floor. I'll ask that you uh, engage the spine by bringing your awareness to the base of the spine, to the top of the head and seeing if you can lengthen along the spine. 
And I'm gonna do a little demonstration of what we'll do. It's pretty simple movement. I'm gonna move my chair back a little bit so that you can see. So on inhale, I'll have you inhale your arm up, pause, and then you'll exhale your arm down. As you begin your movement, as you begin your breath, rather, you begin your movement. So we'll do that on the other side. I'll have you inhale your arm up, pause, begin your exhale, and bring the arm down. We'll practice this for several repetitions so that you can get a feel for what it, for what it means to really connect your breath with your movement. As you begin your breath, then you begin your movement. Always pausing before you begin the next breath and movement. Really feel what it means to breathe into the body as you inhale the arm up, and then on exhale, release. I'm gonna to move to the next movement so we can continue to get a feel for what it means to connect breath with movement. I'm gonna ask you to bring uh, your hands to the back of your legs so that they meet at the hips with your palms down. I'll talk you through the movement. On inhale, we'll move our hands along the legs, moving the hands up while lifting your head slightly. You'll pause after inhale. And on exhale, you move your hands back along the legs and lower your head slightly. Pause after inhale. And then you'll continue that movement. As you continue this movement, really feel yourself connecting your breath and your movement, inhaling into the chest and abdomen, and then consciously contracting the abdomen on exhale by slightly moving the belly button toward the spine. I'll have you continue to inhale, your hands up along your legs, lifting the head slightly, pausing, and then an exhale, moving your hands back along the legs and lowering your head. As you inhale in, you're consciously expanding the chest and abdomen, and on exhale, moving the belly button toward the spine. So now that we've had a chance to uh, connect breath with movement, I'm going to bring you back to your breath awareness. So hopefully you're, you've had a chance to experience how it feels to focus the mind a little bit before I have you close your eyes and bring your attention back to your breathing. We'll do a little bit of breath awareness and then we'll move into a conscious breathing exercise. So you'll begin by watching your breath and letting the inhale and exhale happen naturally without any attempt to control your breathing. If the mind wanders, bring your attention back to your breath. and allow for a nice, smooth inhale and exhale. And now have you bring one hand to your lower belly and with your hand at your lower belly, you'll be able to feel the breath move in and out of the body. And on inhale, you'll consciously expand the lungs and as you bring air into the upper chest, air naturally moves into the belly, pausing after inhale, and then on exhale, releasing air from the belly and lungs as you move the belly button toward the spine. 
pause after exhale, and then repeat. As you inhale, you inhale into the lungs, expanding the chest. Air naturally moves into the belly on inhale, and then on exhale, release air from the belly and lungs. Continue to have a smooth breath, smooth out the breathing. And we'll do this for about 30 seconds. So we make sure we get a sense for conscious breathing. And if your mind wanders, just bring your attention back to your breathing. And I'm going to start to bring you out of the practice. Slowly become aware of the room by gently opening the eyes. And take note of the quality and the state of your mind. And just ask yourself, has it changed at all? How long did it take to become a little more focused? How do you feel in the body? What's your emotional state? And how does it compare to when you started the practice? So I'm going to stop my share and we will move on to the next part of the presentation. Wonderful, thank you. I feel better already. I don't know about the rest of you, I hope so. This has been wonderful. We do have some questions that have come in. I wanna pass your way, Sarah. The first question is, what do we do with our hands during the first breathing seated exercise? During the first breath awareness practice, you can bring your, um, if you're seated in a chair and your knees are, or your legs are there available to you, you can have your palms down on the legs. I'll show you. You can bring your hands like this on your legs and just relax them. You can also gently place your hands at your belly so that you can feel uh, what it's like for the, you can, you can feel what it's like for the breath to move comfortably in and out. Wonderful, wonderful. Another question. I usually just breathe when I'm really stressed. Any advice on how to incorporate this technique in my everyday life before I get to that point? Is there something that we can do to kind of prevent, use this as a preventative tool? Uh, yes, of course. I highly recommend a regular uh, breathing practice. A good time to create a, a practice for yourself is first thing in the morning or uh, sometime in the morning. It is recommended that you, uh, if possible, practice in the same spot and at the same time every day so that you get into the habit. Um, and, you know, in my experience, people who are active and busy, anywhere from a five, 10 minute, 15 minute practice is very useful. I do um, recommend a combination, a little bit of movement. Um, the way that I taught connecting breath with movement and then doing a breathing practice is useful because it helps focus the mind. Wonderful. Um, what are the benefits of inhaling and exhaling through the nose rather than exhaling through the mouth? Uh, that's a very, very good question and a question that I often get. Um, Sometimes it's difficult for people to breathe through the nose, so it is okay if you breathe through the mouth. Um, when we breathe through the nose, it does activate the um, energetic system that's all connected around the nose. And it is the way that I have always learned to breathe and then teach. 
Um, I don't know if that exactly answered the question. So sometimes, um, just to repeat, sometimes people do, when the first, especially when they're first starting out, they do feel more comfortable breathing through the mouth, and that's okay. Um, and breathing through the nose allows the system to move into the uh, relaxation response a little bit easier. Okay. Stress, we all know, stress is a factor for chronic, for some chronic disease. Do you have ideas on how to decrease stress to other ideas on how we can decrease our stress to improve our health? I have a, I have a lot of ideas <laughs> about that. Um, and, you know, I think it does sometimes require lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. So if we want to reduce stress in our lives, we have to look at the things that are causing us stress. What are our triggers? So for example, if we get stressed out when we get inundated with email, then maybe we should choose a time of day to um, look at our email rather than the constant flow. Um, I believe in incorporating a yoga practice into every day, if possible, or regularly, because it does uh, provide a balance and grounding that trains our nervous system to respond to stress a little bit differently than the constant go, 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 go uh, response. And we're all staying at home, staying distancing from each other. What are some good resources, whether it be applications, websites, YouTube videos, or are there certain things that you would recommend um, that we could look to right now to help in our current situations? Uh, in terms of yoga in particular or anything? Yes, yes. Well, let's see. I do, I, I'm, I, have, I can recommend one, one that comes off hand. I am teaching a free yoga class uh, online series that you can find out more about on my website, which I believe Caroline will share. It's yes. yoga.com. Um, I'm kind of of the mindset that um, yoga is taught really well in person, so, and uh, either one-on-one -on -one or in small groups, so I do believe an in-person teacher is super important. I, I don't um, have a lot of YouTube videos that I watch um, or apps or things like that. I do think that if you get a practice from a teacher, then being able to train yourself to practice on your own is really uh, important and or working with your teacher to for him or her to help facilitate a practice that you can do with your teacher or um, when we all get back into person one-on-one -on -one with that person or in a in a group setting so i don't know if that really answered your question um, but i hope so Thank you. Um, one of our um, participants is saying Calm app is a good one. Um, you like that one, the Calm app? Are you familiar with that one? I'm, I'm not familiar with that, yeah. um, but I, I do have students who have listened to meditation uh, apps and something like a Calm app. And so what they do is they pick a time of day, maybe two o'clock in the afternoon, and they commit 20 to 30 minutes to listening to a guided visualization or a guided breathing, guided breathing practice. So if you are the type of person that loves to be guided through your practice, then I do recommend that as an avenue, especially now when we don't have um, our, the opportunity to be in person. Yes. Um, another question, as an early riser, would you be able to recommend a TV show that I can follow for yoga? I'm, I don't have a TV show that I can recommend to follow for yoga. Mm -hmm. I do think um, getting, being able to do a yoga practice or a breathing practice on our own is, is the best way because it really requires you to go inward and be connected to yourself versus the outside stimuli. I know it can be hard and challenging for us to do it that way, but if that's how we learn from the beginning, then, then we can get in a habit of 
being able to spend time with ourselves. Okay, we'll have time for one more question here. My mom shared that she can only breathe with her abdomen expanding on exhale instead of inhale. What is your experience with people who do that and what do you suggest? Can, can you repeat that? What sure. My mom shared that she can only breathe with her abdomen expanding on exhale instead of inhale. What is your experience with people who do that and what do you suggest to be able to help her breathe? One of the things that I might uh, recommend is, um, well, two things. One, the breath awareness. So with the breath awareness, you're really just becoming aware of your breath and you don't have to worry about how you're inhaling and exhaling. You don't have to worry, worry about where the breath is going. That's, that's firstly because then the natural breathing pattern will reestablish itself. And then secondly, a little bit of movement with breathing can help with that. So if I ask you to inhale your arm up and exhale your arm down, you're getting in touch with your breath, but you're not having to direct it anywhere and think about whether or not you're, where it's going and whether that's wrong or right. Very good, very good. Well, thank you. Um, that's all that we can take right now for our Q&A. Barry, if you wouldn't mind, please putting back up our slide presentation and we will get ready to share some more information. Again, thank you all for joining. For more information, be sure to visit us at uahs.arizona.edu. Please also follow us on our social media platforms. Next slide, please. And you will be receiving a post-session email, which will include a very brief survey. We'd love to get your thoughts and recommendations on how today's presentation, as well as your ideas for future presentations as well, because we're doing this for you. We want to be able to help you during this time and also going forward. Also in the email, you will receive a recording of today's video. So please feel free to share that with friends and family. Next slide, please. Also for Sarah, we were talking about some resources and things that might be handy for you. Um, please make note of this. This is Sarah's uh, website for blessingsyoga.com forward slash resources. If you don't have the opportunity to take a picture or get this right now, we'll be sure to include this in our post email so that way you'll have all the information as well. And then just one more. Mary, please. Ah. Mark your calendars, get ready to zoom in next week, May 6th, for our continuing series and learn how to, you can eat healthy at home and discover tasty smoothies and new salad dressings presented by Elizabeth Sparks. We're going on several weeks now, so I don't know, like many of you, I'm starting to turn to comfort food, which I don't want to do, so this is going to be a great topic. Please be sure to mark your calendars for that. Next slide, please. And again, thank you all for joining us. We're just so excited to be able to present this on behalf of my colleagues, Allison and Anne-Marie. Stay well, be well, and have a great day. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, everyone. Thank you.